Good morning, everyone. Happy Saturday. It is March 27th, I think, maybe? 27th? No, nope, 28th? I don't know what today is. <laughs> <It's> Saturday. <laughs> I'll leave it down here below. So today is uh, my start of t-shirt week. So uh, technically when you guys are seeing this, yesterday was your start of uh, t-shirt week because um, you had a formal video that went up yesterday where we talked about inspiration, the patterns I'm gonna use and that kind of stuff. Um, this is how this is gonna kind of roll. I was like laying in bed thinking about this a little bit last night. So I'm just gonna be sewing up t-shirts um, and maybe even towards the end of the week sweatshirts I might um, pop on over to sweatshirts depending on how quickly I go through a lot of the t-shirts. Obviously I will be popping in and doing tips and stuff like that as we go along. Um, some of the stuff that is going to go in the more formal videos like anything fitting related or pattern alterations or neck bands will all go into formal videos. So I will be recording that stuff as I go through but you won't see that until um, Tuesday will be where I talk about um, fabric and fitting and so and then like pattern alterations that kind of thing and then Friday will be a video of neckline common necklines um, so all that information um, literal tutorials of me you know, watching me so like a v-neckline um, the square neckline which I've never done a square neckline to be perfectly honest but I just think I'm, I know I'm not crazy about the way that Pamela's patterns her instructions I don't like her V neckline the way that she does that I have my own way so I'm going to show you how I'm gonna, how I do that and then um, I think it should just be the same thing you're just doing kind of a V neck on either side of the square so in my head <laughs> it's the same so uh, we'll see but I'll take you guys along on um, with me on that um, we'll be doing a boat neckline. I'll be talking about a scoop neck and um, I'm actually going to sew a scoop neckline today and I may talk with you a little bit about ratios because um, it's really not that hard but I'll be showing you how to actually sew in a scoop neck band on Friday as well um, and a Henley. I knew there was another one <laughs> and a Henley neck band which can be used for like a polo shirt um, as well as just a Henley um, neck band. And someone had asked me about fabric for polo shirts, you know, like the different fabric, like if you were making a golf shirt or whatever. Um, and actually, the place where I got the cuffing for my daughter's sweatshirts um, has, you can buy a collar, which is really cool, <laughs> and a whole bunch of different colors. So it's like that same, um, almost kind of cuffing type material, so it's thinner one layer so it's been knitted basically um but you can pop that onto a um you know a golf shirt or a henley t-shirt basically and it turns it into a collared shirt um so i'll leave i'll talk more about that um, when it comes to neckline day and i'll leave links um, where you can find that kind of stuff and then next sunday is going to be just a big reveal of all the t-shirts so that is kind of um, my thinking so i'm just going to be kind of popping back and forth between things that i'm just going to show you in the daily vlogs versus things that are going to go in the more formal videos um and i'm going to try and rig up a little something i have some um overhead filming stuff um ordered that is just taking forever to get here because of everything that's going on um so i'm just going to try and flanagle I'm still trying to figure all that, the overhead out. I've ordered a couple of things and sent them back because I'm not crazy about them. So anyway, <laughs> we're gonna just try and kind of try and get creative because um, I would like to have you above me as much as possible for this. But like I said, I have ordered another set. It just isn't here yet. Um, so we'll see. Um, okay, yeah. So I'm not sure how much time lapsing, I guess is what I'm getting at. It's gonna be actually in this next week's worth of videos just because I may be, I don't know, we'll see. We're just gonna kinda go with the flow, see how things are going. But it's Saturday, which means no school. It is rainy. I went to the grocery store this morning with my husband. <sighs> Still no paper towels to be found. Also, no, there were a couple, there was some toilet paper, not much, but there was some, people were grabbing it, but we're fine on toilet paper. We are, however, on our last roll of paper towels, which is really unfortunate. <laughs> Can't even get them on Amazon right now. I just don't get the run on paper towels and, and toilet paper, but anyway. Um, we were able to get everything else. So we have got our grocery run down to once a week. Um, it's a big grocery run, but he goes with me and pushes the cart because I 
can do our grocery store, you know, blindfolded pretty much. Um, and then I'm just, you know, be bopping around people and grabbing stuff off shelves and putting it in the cart so we can kind of try and get through there as quickly as possible. But that was this morning, so it's become our Saturday morning thing. Um, yeah, and then for the rest of the day, it's supposed to be rainy and thunderstorms all day, which is unfortunate for my family. But for me, <laughs> I'm just going to hit the sewing room. Okay, so I'm going to do a... Um, yeah, I'm going to go print out the Love Notions um, Basics tank because I want to be able to be cutting out tank tops as I cut out my t-shirts. Um, might as well. So that's what I'm going to do. So yeah, I'll probably do some time lapse today as I'm cutting out my first t-shirt. Um, I don't think I'm going to batch cut the t-shirts because I'm not 100% sure which t-shirts I want to make out of which knits quite yet. I just am kind of going with the flow on that one. So yeah, I'm just going to cut out a t-shirt and then we'll sew it and then we'll cut out the next and yada 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 yada. So um, that way I can also make up tank tops as I go because I'll have the right thread in my machine. Anyway, okay, let's get to making some t-shirts. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna really quickly talk about, um, not really quickly, let's talk about um, scoop necklines, neck bands. I know a lot of people had said they have a really hard time getting their neck bands to look right. It is pretty easy. You don't have to use the neck band piece that comes with the pattern. Now you can use, let me grab the one that comes with this. You can definitely use the width of your neck band piece. So this is the neck band for this, um, for the larger neckline. So I've got two necklines. There's this larger neckline I could cut on or the smaller. So there are, um, you could definitely use the width, but as far as the length, go buy your fabric for that. Um, a lot of times these pieces work fine, but if you're having a hard time getting your fabric to lie flat, there could be a few things. If you have really, really stretchy fabric, um, you're gonna want a shorter neck band probably. And I like to do is measure your neckline front and back, take away your 
seam allowances at the shoulders. Usually it's cut on the fold, so you don't have to worry about seam allowances at the front. But measure along the sewing line, not the seam line. I mean measure along the seam line, not the cut line, of the neckline. And then take 85% of that number. So you're going to subtract 15%. So you're just going to multiply that number. Um, and remember to multiply by, you know, you're just, there's half of your back, or half of your front, half of your back, and then multiply it by two so that you have your full neckband measurement. And then you're going to multiply that number by 0.85, which will give you 85% of the length of your neckband. That is going to give you, for most of my cotton knits, and for most of my rayon knits, that gives me a very a perfect neckband. Now, if you're using a really stretchy ITY net or even um, like a something that has like over 100% stretch or even 100% stretch, um, you may want to go down to 80%. Just kind of play around with that. If you're using a cotton knit that has very little stretch, like my striped um, boat neck t-shirt uh, that I've made recently, you're probably going to want to use like 90%. But it's the stretching of that neckline to fit, of that neckband to fit the neckline that keeps it lying flat. And that is the key to a good neckband. Okay? So, measure, and then you can measure the pieces that you have. Um, and that will uh, tell you if you need to go shorter or longer. Okay? And then, some patterns don't use a neckband. They will use a neck binding and that's when you wrap the fabric around um, from the front to the back like a bias binding kind of but with knit fabric. That you want one-to-one -one usually with your um, uh, neckband because that gets wrapped around. I mean it can be a little bit smaller and I think a lot of times it may be just a little bit smaller but that one I just usually use the pattern piece no matter how stretchy my fabric is because you've got that stabilized um, neckline usually well at least when I do my neck band binds neck bindings I surge and then wrap and that um, causes it to be a little more stable so I'm just wrapping the fabric around that surged um, line so remember you have two different neck bindings neck bands neck bands you want those to be about 85 percent of your neckline for most things give or take five percent depending on if you don't have any stretch or very little stretch in your knit versus if it's like an IT Y net that has a ton of stretch. All right, so I am ready to cut out my um, t-shirt. Now you'll see that I have gigantic pattern pieces here because this is actually also a dress and I'm going to leave those pattern pieces as is because um, I really might want to make the dress here at some point and I don't have to reprint everything out. Um, this pattern also comes, this is the Idle Wild, it's to stitch Idle Wild. And it also comes, um, it's got the neckband for the smaller neckline, the neckband for the larger neckline, because there's two different cut lines that you could do on this pattern. Um, I'm speaking about it in the neckline um, video, but measure these. A lot of times I find itch to stitch, just with the, the amount of stretch I use, that these pieces are absolutely fine for me to use, and I have enough um, difference between the neckband and the neckline. Um, but measure if you're not sure. If you're not sure the new pattern company, if you're just not sure. So if you've got something really, really stretchy, like over 100% stretch in your fabric, you're going to maybe want to do 80% of your um, neckline for your neckband. Most of the time, 90% of the time, I'm using 85% um, as the ratio of my neckband to my neckline. But if you're using a fabric like the um, tan and white or vanilla striped boat neck shirt that I recently made, that has hardly any stretch in it. It's um, organic cotton with there's no spandex in it, so it's just mechanical stretch. So you would maybe want to use 90% in that case um, to get a nice neckline Y. Okay, so there's that with necklines. Giving you a little sneak peek before neckline uh, video on Friday. But because I want to make full advantage of my fabric here, you want to make sure and lay out your fabric, not just fold it over on itself with one fold, but with two folds. So what I'm going to do, I have everything on grain here, and it's easy to tell with knit because if the knit seems to be warping at the fold, fold line, like pulling towards one way, you just want it to be lying flat at the fold. It's pretty easy to tell. Um, because a selvage on knit can pull in the um, ends of the selvage and so it may not look uniform across when you fold it. 
Speaking of which, yes, usually you can tell with the ribs, <laughs> make sure you're correct with your selvages. But I just want to fold to the center of the fabric, and that looks great there. And then take one of your pieces, just to make sure you folded it over enough, and I'm not making the dress right now, I'm just making the t-shirt, and that looks pretty good. And then we're going to do the same on the other side. We can pull this up more onto our cutting mat too. So basically you're bringing your selvages to the middle. So you've got two folds. Now I may have to adjust this a little bit, um, mostly for the sleeve, but since I'm going to be also cutting out a tank um, or a vest, depending on where you are in the world, <laughs> I just want to make sure that I have, um, you know, I, I want to be cutting economically to make sure that I get all of the use out of this fabric. So that is the tip for that. So now I'm just going to cut out this Idlewild t-shirt. I'm going to be doing a three-quarter length on this one. And I think I'm going to be doing the smaller neckline on this one. We're going to try it out. And then I'll also be cutting out the Love Notions Summer Basic Tank. Because I figure what the hay, I'm going to have enough fabric that I could probably um, get one of those out of this as well. Okay, time for time lapse. this is what I was able to get out of, um, let's see, I had one and a half yards of this. It came from Stylemaker Fabrics. It is a um, cotton, or oh, I can't remember now if this one's an organic one or not. Um, some of the ones in my, in my pile are organic cotton, but it's a cotton spandex. I have these two pieces left, um, and that's pretty much it. Everything else was just strips, basically. Um, so I think I'm going to put these aside because I think these could be fun for contrasting bindings or neckbands if I decide I want to get crazy a little later. Because um, there's not much. I mean, you can see. There's very little left. Um, but I am just going to keep it out. I'm not going to put it in my regular knit scrap bin. I'm just going to, I'm going to make a pile, I think, of offcuts over here on this chair. Of offcuts from this um, t-shirt. Because a bonus of uh, sewing in my quote-unquote colors is that things tend to go together. So, um... 
I might be able to mix and match a few of these that are also in my pile later on. So I'll just set those aside for now. But let me show you what I got cut out of one and a half yards. So I got my Idlewild cut out. I ultimately decided to do a short sleeve on that. Um, you know, I need some things for summer. I have like a couple of ratty short sleeved uh, t-shirts and that's it. Um, this pattern has a mid short sleeve that hits like right above the elbow. I don't tend to go for that length because that tends to hit right across my bust. So I think the short length, um, this also has a cap length, um, cap sleeve, but I think the short length is going to be about perfect because it will be um, above my bust. Um, so I think that should be, and usually those kind of are angled a little bit when all is said and done when those are cut in. And then I got my basic tank, um, Love Notions uh, Summer Basic Tank cut out with uh, the bindings for that. And then I printed off the Megan Nielsen Acacia or Acacia underwear. It is a free pattern if you sign up for her, I mean you can buy it, but you can get it for free. It's one of the free options if you sign up for her newsletter on her website. But the picture on her website, I'll pop a picture of it up right here, is just so pretty. All the different kind of things you can do with the underwear. My underwear drawer needs some serious, atten serious attention. Um, and I have a whole bunch of those fold-over elastics and lingerie elastics that I purchased in Chicago earlier in the year. Um, or was that last year? I guess last fall. Whenever that was. <laughs> um, anyway, I thought that might be kind of fun to play with at some point. So um, I thought, well, if I've got enough for underwear, I will also cut out underwear out of the cottons, not the merinos, obviously. That would be warm underwear. Um, but I think I will do that. I'm not going to sew these now. Um, so maybe after t-shirt week's over, we can have an underwear sewing day or something. Um, but yes, I'm just going to keep this pattern nearby and cut those out too as I'm going along and then get some new underwear out of the deal. Okay, so now we are ready. I think the only thing I'm going to sew, well, I don't know. I don't know if I'll get to the tank or not today. We'll see. Um, but definitely going to work on the t-shirt now. Okay, so here's the deal. I'm filming both for the actual videos that you'll be seeing and then just also for the vlog. So I'm going to give some cheaters here um, for the vlog. So a cheat way to, when you're sewing um, t-shirts or whatever up on your serger and you don't want to buy, especially if you have a weird color, like this almost macaroni and cheese color, <laughs> like not real macaroni and cheese, like craft macaroni and cheese color shirt that I am making, fabric I'm using, I don't want to buy four cones of serger thread for that. So a way to cheat that is to buy one spool of thread like you would and just put that on the far left hand needle of your serger because um, it doesn't really matter what's on the inside. I mean you don't want it showing through. Gray is typically a safe one to go through for most fabrics. Uh, obviously if you're making a white shirt you'd want to use white but um, for colors like this gray usually works fine. That way if you have any stress on a seam you're seeing this color right here not the gray um, that kind of comes through on the you know if a um, especially with a tight-fitting t-shirt. If it gets pulled just a little bit and you can kind of see um, the stress on the seam, it is the same color thread that, that you're seeing and not the gray. Um, also, the same thing with cover stitching. I've got a um, bobbin all wound with this, this uh, thread as well, so when it's time to cover stitch, I will use the spool in one of my needles and the bobbin in the other to do all the cover stitching so that that is the thread that's on the top. And that's how you get away with only having to buy one spool of thread instead of four um, to do all of your searching. So that's just kind of a cheater way. Also, and I'll talk more about this on Tuesday, um, but this is the So Keezy, and I think you can get this on Amazon, Palmer Pledge sells it, you can get it a lot of different places. Um, but this is the double-sided fusible stay tape. It is one inch wide and you iron it on to um, the back right at the hem. Then you pull the paper off, turn your hem up, iron it again. This is fantastic for hems. I know a lot of people had asked if I could talk about um, doing a good hem on a knit. This is fantastic. It will stabilize your knit fabric. I don't use a twin needle really ever, but I will talk about it um, one of these days, one of the days that we'll be doing um, about how to sew knits with your sewing machine instead of with a serger. Um, but this is a way I think to help with tunneling. Tunneling is when the back is too tight 
and so it's pulling those two um, stitches together. You don't really get it as much in cover stitch, although you can if you've got a really thin net, but again, this stuff solves all those issues, and I use it all the time because it just helps me get a one inch hem, which I think is just very beautiful, and then I don't have a lot of trimming to do on the inside. I mean, not that I really do trim, but it definitely gets the um, loopy side of the cover stitch covering most of the raw edge. So anyway, I love this stuff. And also from the same company, I love the half inch uh, woven stay tape. Um, I use this for the shoulder seams. I just fuse it onto the back shoulder seams of my shirt and it keeps your um, shoulder seams from stretching out over time because those do get a lot of stress when you're taking a shirt on and off and that will really help with the longevity of your t-shirts. So those are my two favorite. There's other tapes that this company makes, um, but those are my two favorite for knits. Sometimes I use the thin, the half inch knit stay tape um, for necklines, especially if it calls for you just to turn it under, you know, stitch and then turn it under and cover stitch or whatever. Um, I don't, I'm not really crazy about those kind of necklines. I think that they still get stretched out really easily, but the knit does come in ha handy for that. But for the most part, these two are the ones that get used the most with my knit projects. So, and I don't use the woven stay tape if it's a tank top because there's no sleeve attached. Um, so I'm going to be sewing up both my tank and my t-shirt. Um, I'll do the tank second. I'm not doing any cover stitching today because I have to switch my machine over. So we'll just be um, sewing things up and then I'll just have a cover stitch day <laughs> towards the end of the week where we can cover stitch all of our necklines, all of our hems, and um, all that jazz. Okay, so I'm just going to go fuse this to the hems of both of my tank top and my shirt and fuse this to the back um, shoulder seams of my um, t-shirt, the Idlewild that I'm working on. Um, yeah, and I'm just going to time lapse you guys. I'll pop in if I want to say something, any more tips or tricks. All right, so I want to show you what this looks like. I also put this on the hem of my sleeves. So I've got that double um, sided fusible tape, the one inch on the bottoms, and I leave the paper on, um, but on the bottoms of both sleeves, and then on the bottom of the front hem, and then on the back, these are all on the wrong side, I've got the tape on the hem, and then I've got, you guys can see, the um, woven stay tape fused onto my shoulder seams. All right, so um, I am gonna just time lapse this as I'm making a um, shirt. I am gonna stop and talk about how I'm putting the neckband in, but you're not gonna see that part until Friday. <laughs> That'll be part of the necklines. Um, so yeah. So there'll be a little bit of a skip while I put in the neckband, but you will see that part on Friday. Okay, let's get to sewing. Okay, so I have a finished t-shirt here. Now you didn't get to see me put in the neckband, but again, you'll see that on Friday. I'm gonna turn this right side out for you. I'll put it on. Um, I'm not gonna cover stitch yet though. I'm gonna wait and get, <laughs> cause it's just kind of a pain to switch everything over to cover stitch. So I'll wait and switch over to cover stitch when I have all the t-shirts to do. Um, but here we go. So this is the, um, it's not a crew neck. It definitely does scoop down a little bit, but it's the narrower neck. Um, I'm just going to go and peel the tape off of this and then press it up. And that glue will actually hold it in place so I can try it on for you guys here in just a minute. But I wanted to talk about the um, order that I make my t-shirts. So I always do my shoulder seams first, front and back together at shoulder seams. Then I do whatever neck band treatment that I'm doing. 
whatever that happens to be. <laughs> then I put my sleeves in flat. So instead of trying to sew my, um, excuse the dog, <laughs> the underarm seam and sewing the sleeve in in the round, I spread out the shirt as you saw me doing and I put that sleeve in flat. Um, if you guys want more information, I mean, it's pretty easy. You're just sewing from underarm seam to underarm seam and easing in the sleeve as you go. And then I sew from the hem, my side seams, from the hem all the way up to the hem, hem of the shirt up to the hem of the sleeve in one fell swoop. And then you go back and I am going to cover stitch um, around the neckline when it's time. And I'm also will uh, cover stitch my hems. So my sleeve hems and my um, bottom hem. And that's it. They go together really, really quick. So I'm really quickly going to um, take my tape off and press up my hems and then I will um, try it on for you. All right, guys, here is my short sleeve Idlewild. I cut the extra small in the um, um, neckline and in the shoulders and then I took it to a medium once I got to under my, uh, my underarms and I think that works perfect. It is riding right along my arm's eye, which I really love, especially considering this pattern does not have a full bust um, piece. But I, I mean, I'm pleased with the short sleeve on this. It doesn't, anything here cuts right across the fullest part of my bust. Up here, I'm fine with, especially as they kind of come at a little bit of an angle. And then there's the back. I love the length. Um, it's going to be really nice once I've actually, once it's not just glued, but actually sewn down. So, there we have it. T-shirt number one. Excuse me, I've got a spot there on me. Um, and this is the narrower neckline. This will lie a little bit better. Um, my seam allowance is wanting to flip up to the neckband. This will lie better once I have... Um, top stitch that down with a cover stitch because that will keep that this is wanting to pop up um, but that will lie much better once I've cover stitched that down as soon as I've switched to the cover stitch but that's hitting right at the top of my shoulder and that's cutting right into my arm which is exactly where I want it um, this is my first time sewing the Idlewild um, by itch to stitch and I'm very excited to try the other options it has a um, ruched t-shirt option where it ruches up the side seams which might be kind of fun to try um and then it's got a dress option um it's got um i feel like there's another length in there uh, it also does a ruched long sleeve so you could do some ruching along the um the sleeve a little bit if you wanted to which is kind of cool um or it's just got a straight sleeve it's got a cap sleeve option and then short mid or mid short or something like that. I think it's one that hits like not at a good angle for me um, because of where it hits on my bust and then a three quarter length and then long sleeve. So um, yeah, a great bang for your buck on that t-shirt and I really like the way um, it fits. This one's a little more fitted. The Pamela pattern um, perfect tee is a little looser through the waist and hips just the way that it's designed. So this one definitely fits a little tighter which is fantastic for layering, for wearing it under jackets and that kind of thing. Um, yeah. Yeah, once I stitch down, that's another key for a really nice neckline is, um, top stitching. And if you look at any store, most store-bought shirts, their neckbands are cover stitched down as well. So yeah, very pleased with that. And I think this will look really cute under, um, one of the rayon dresses that I'm going to make, um, to wear it into more months, a summer dress that can maybe go into a little bit cooler months, so... Yes, so I got this out of it. I did get a uh, tank out of this, and then I cut out the pair of underwear, although that's just pieces right now. Um, I'll just do a big underwear sewing party at some point, I guess. <laughs> okay, so this is gonna go into the cover stitch pile um, for that point, and then um, it's probably, probably it for today. I'm gonna call it for today, only because I have a lot of editing to do. Um, my proper video that's going up tomorrow, I'm still not done editing that, um, and then yeah, so some of these videos, like I actually do have to do proper filming um, during the day, so you obviously won't see that until the proper videos come up, so it'll be a little bit of a mishmash, but um, I think I've got some good footage for you guys for today. My hair looks amazing, by the way. It just wants to curl really weirdly right on this side, like not <laughs> hormones are so weird. 
Um, but anyway, I think that's all I've got for you for today. I'm just going to go um, do a workout and then um, edit and get all of that up and then just probably hang with my family a little bit today. Maybe watch a movie tonight or something. Just kind of do some bonding. You know, it's a perfect time for that right now. So, uh, yeah. But I hope you enjoyed following me along on my t-shirt making adventures today. And we will do more tomorrow. I don't know what I'm going to work on tomorrow yet. I was just, I'm, I am editing the video you're going to, well, you have already seen it by the time you're seeing this, um, with the inspiration pictures. And it's, it's looking at all those pictures again, it's kind of inspired me to go maybe a little bit rogue. Tomorrow though, I may work on, do a boat neckline um, and add the cuffs. Um, Cause one of the shirts kind of has a boat neckline and then has the fun contrasting cuffs on it. Um, I may work on that one tomorrow. All right, that's all we've got for today and I will see you all tomorrow. Bye. Hello everyone, happy Sunday. It is March 29th, I think. I think. I was totally wrong yesterday when I announced it. I think yesterday was the 28th and today's the 29th. Is that right? Yes. Today's the 29th. Um, okay. So we have done, uh, online church. We all sat in the living room and I actually got dressed for online church this morning. I'm wearing my Rhapsody blouse by Love Notions. I really like this one. Um, this one's a little tighter than my red one, but I still really like this one. Um, it, this is the standard bust front as opposed to the full bust front. Anyway, it's really just, it's tight in the underarm. And I think that that is a common thing. Actually, if it were sleeveless, it wouldn't be a big deal. It's my elbow catches on the sleeve, you know, like it needs to pull up. Maybe I've made my um, elastic too tight in this one. I don't know, I go back and forth. Again, I'm right on the line with Love Notions patterns, whether or not I should be using the standard bust front or the full bust front. So, you know, it's just kind of, try it all. <laughs> um, I have been cutting the full bust front for the uh, Summer Basics tank though that I've been cutting out with the um, my t-shirts as I go along and I do like that. I think that that I did need that for and that's a knit pattern so I don't know. I guess it just depends. Anyway today we are going to I think um, tackle a Pamela start tackling some of the Pamela patterns. Um, I've got that out. I've ironed it, that in all the templates for the expansion pack as well. Um, and I think I'm just gonna talk you through how those work because they're a little different with the variations, um, the way that you put the necklines on the two uh, bodices, the back bodice and front bodice. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of talk you through that. And I think today I'm gonna do the ballet neck, which is very similar to the scoop neck. It's the same neck treatment. Um, it's just a little wider, like it comes out a little wider. It's a little deeper in the front and in the back. Um, but I thought that might be kind of fun to do with the uh, contrasting cuffs. So I'm going to cut into that uh, goldenrod, I think it's called, um, cotton jersey from Blackbird Fabrics. And I'm going to use the um, uh, cuffing <laughs> that I got from Stoffbrite. And I think I'm saying that name right, the Etsy shop. I'll leave it linked down below, of course. Um, so yeah, I'm basically recreating that love or that um, Bowden shirt. It was the last two shirts that I showed you at the end of um, the video today that you're watching. So I guess technically today kicks off T-shirt week. So I started filming yesterday, but you guys saw the first video today. So it's very exciting. Here we go. So uh, yeah, my plan is to try and get one T-shirt a day sewn um, for the daily vlogs. And then obviously I think that should give me enough fodder for the um, more... Um, formal videos as well. I mean, that's going to give me seven t-shirts by the end of this. And I think that should probably do me for a little bit that, and that's about all the fabric I've got. Um, I may today cut out my Bryce jumpsuit. I'll pop a picture of that pattern here. It's Stylark Bryce jumpsuit. Cause that's what I'm going to use that digital print, um, cotton jersey for from Minerva. And if I have some left over, the reason I want to go ahead and cut that out, I don't know that I'll sew it, but I think I will go ahead and cut it out maybe some point today. I don't know that I'll film that, um, but go ahead and cut it out because um, if I have any extra, I have three meters of that fabric. So if I've got extra, I may cut myself out a t-shirt out of that as well. So um, that I could sew up later in the week, you know, with these daily vlogs. So anyway, I may do that day too. But yeah, let's get along and I will film the making of the Pamela pattern ballet neck today. And then I think we'll do a square neck and the boat neck, and then we'll move on to um, the Love Notions t-shirt. And I'll end the week, I think, with the Ellie Henley, um, which is the Henley, the Henley placket on the, the um, t-shirt. That's my plan, I think. We'll see, it could change. 
But I've got the Pamela pattern all out, it's ironed, so it just makes sense to go ahead and do those three shirts right now. So yeah, okay. Let's go, um, well, yeah, let's go sew a shirt. Okay, so today we're gonna tackle the Pamela Patterns uh, t-shirt. I'm gonna make a couple of neckline versions of these, and I just kinda wanted to show you, there were a lot of um, questions about them, kind of what they entail. So she's got her regular t-shirt pattern that comes with the front, the back, and the sleeve that has a couple different uh, length variations. Um, the expansion, let's see, and then it comes with just the regular um, jewel neckline, like a crew neckline. And then, let's see, it comes with a V neckline, let me find it, right here, and a scoop neckline. And basically, they are these templates. And what you do is, um, for the original pattern, you're just messing with the front, not with the back. You are only, you're lining up your shoulder here, this shoulder line, with the shoulder of your pattern, and you're lining your, um, center front here on your okay let me say this correctly <laughs> you're gonna cut out your front out of your fabric then you're gonna lay this piece here on top of what you've just cut out and gonna cut this away so then you now have just on your front piece you now have your v-neckline the same for the scoop neckline which I see same thing so you cut out your jewel neckline top, and then you just lay this on top of your fabric that you've just cut out, and recut um, your new neckline. Now, I do want to say, she gives you measurements for what your neckband should be. I have found them to be a little bit long for the... Um, stretch that I used for my fabric and so like I said in the scoop neck um, I kinda mentioned it um, yesterday I guess um, measure your neckline whatever neckline you're using and do normally 85 percent of that is gonna be your neckband length and then you can use her width whatever I can't remember off the top of my head what her width is um, suggested so that is how you use her templates now with the expansion pack it gets a little more confusing. So this is this is the uh, square neckline. It's pretty much the same thing. So you'd cut out your fabric, and then you would lay this on top of the fabric, same type thing, and you would cut away this area to make the square neckline. The back neckline stays the same. Um, your ballet neckline um, is just like a really wide scoop. In fact, I think I'm going to make this one for um, my shirt that I put my contrasting cuffs. This is the one I'm going to make today. Um, same thing though. You're just going to lay this on top, I think. Yes, this is the back. So the um, ballet neckline has a front and a back piece. So this one's the front. So this one will get laid on top of the fabric once it's been cut on the front. And then this piece goes on the back. But there's a couple more that get a little more intricate. One is the funnel neck. So the funnel neck, this gets laid on top of here and you're gonna line up your shoulder and your fold at this point and this gets laid here before you cut out because all of this gets added on when you're cutting out. So this creates this funnel neck look which I am interested to try. We're just getting kind of out of that weather right now. Um, so that may wait until um, the fall. But that's basically all you do. And then when you get to the side here and you're gonna cut, then you just peel this piece back and cut um, your regular arm's eye. And the same, and there's a front and back for the funnel neck. And then the same thing for the boat neckline, it actually wants you, and you'll see because I've made this boat neckline, it wants you to measure down a certain, let's see, that's the back piece. It wants you to measure down um, the front, and I'm cutting an extra small at the neckline because that's what I need, and then I'm going to a medium. Two inches down, which is what I did. So this just gets, I just made a line for the boat neck when I want to make the boat neck, and that gets lined up like that and then that gets lined up like that, and then that gets cut out um, with this piece on it. And you just kind of fold the arm um, 
pole out of the, or the seam. Oh my gosh, what is this called? Shoulders, the shoulder there out of the way. And everything else pretty much matches up. So that is how to use the templates for the Pamela Patterns um, shirts. So if you have any other questions, feel free to ask. Um, like I said, I'm going to cut out a ballet neck right now. Um, and then I'll show you how I'm going to measure to cut my neckband. So stay tuned. All right, I thought this might be better to help you show it to you in action. <laughs> so I've cut out the front, as you can see, the regular jewel neckline. Now I lay this ballet neckline, this is the front, and I've just lined it up with the um, fold on the front. And then I want it, you know, I scoot it as far down as this finally lines up with the shoulder here. So now I'm just going to go back and I'm going to cut along this neckline. And I'll do the same to the back because the ballet neckline has um, a different template for the front and the back. So that is how that works. It's very, very easy. Um, and I will be right back to show you how we are going to uh, measure for our neckbands. Okay, I've done some math. I'm going to show you what I did. So I measured the front neckline and subtracted my seam allowance from up here. It's a quarter of an inch seam allowances, so it'll be, I subtracted out a half inch total, which makes my front neckline 17 inches. Did the same for my back neckline, which makes it 12 and 3 quarters. So if you add those together, you get 29 and 3 quarters neckline um, total. That excludes the seam allowances. And then I've written here 85% neckband. She wants you to do 2 and a half inches um, long. And then my, I figured up 85% of the 29 and 3 quarters is about, I rounded it a little bit, um, 25 and a quarter. She wants you to do a band two and a half inches by 27 and a half. So I am doing two and a quarter inches smaller neck band. And I did find when I followed her instructions for the scoop neck that it was, it was not tight against my body, my, my chocolate brown one. Um, I don't know why I just blindly followed, but that's the case. And I made sure and wrote 85% here because if I'm using a knit with way more stretch, I may want to write a different number down here, or if less stretch, I may want to use something different. So this is just to remind me that if I'm using typically what I would use, um, that's the 85% stretch and that's the neckband that I need to cut. So there's no neckband piece of this pattern. She just gives you the measurements to cut. So I know I need to cut a piece this size and that should be perfect and hug my body just perfectly. Okay, having camera issues this morning. <laughs> Okay, so I've got my Pamela pattern. Um, I'm a little worried that my camera is going to teeter over, especially when this starts vibrating. Okay, <laughs> my makeshift tripod. Okay, so we're doing the Pamela patterns um, ballet neckline, which is just a scoop neckline. It's just a little wider than your normal scoop neckline, but I've done a few things different on this. So I have gone ahead and fused my um, woven stay tape to the back of my shoulders, but I've not put any of the hem stuff on the bottom, any of the double-sided glue on the bottom, because this has a curved, a little bit of a curved hem. It's probably not showing it at all. Um, trust me. <laughs> this t-shirt has a little bit of a curved hem. So it kind of comes up on the side, and there's a very, um, a much more drastic curve right there on the end. It's a little bit straighter on the bottom, but it kind of um, comes up and then goes you know, then the back, it kind of goes down again. So there's a teeny, teeny bit of a shirt tail hem. And people have asked me um, the best way to hem those knits because it can be very difficult. It's basically the same idea as when I do my shirt tail hems with the uh, bias tape, with the men's ties bias tape, except we're going to use a one inch strip of knit cut across the stretchy grain. It's gonna curl on you, it's so annoying. <laughs> Um, and it's a really long, just one inch piece, you know, strip of knit. You can cut it against the, um, at the bottom, you know, cross grain against the entire width of your fabric. Um, so this is what we're going to use for the bias for that hem, basically. Um, and we'll get to that. I'll show you what to do when we get to that point. Um, and I'm just going to kind of do a sew along on this one today because I've already filmed how to do a scoop neck line for Friday. And that is, it's the same technique. So we'll just do a sew along today. All right, so first things first, we always start with um, shoulders together. I sew my shoulders first. I have my cheater, my, you can't see it, my color of thread that matches on the um, far left needle. 
And I'm just gonna sew my shoulder seams really quickly. Okay, once we have our shoulder seams done, um, you can go press those to the back and then also go ahead and, um, I talked about how to configure your neckband. Go ahead and sew that. We're using quarter inch seam allowance. So go ahead and sew that real quick. All right, so I'm gonna go over to the sewing machine. I'm gonna press my shoulder seams to the back and then I'm going to press my um, neckband loop into a right sides together um, band. So I'll be right back. Okay, once everything is pressed, we're gonna quarter things. So the center back seam is where your seam is. Yeah, and I always mark, when I cut things on the fold, I always mark that and so I have that marked the front. This is very curly jersey. <laughs> it's not wanting to cooperate, even with the pressing. All right, so I'm matching my seam line up with the um, center notches that I made, and I'm just gonna make teeny tiny notches. And again, to the other side. So again, I'm just matching my seam to the center clip. Um, when I cut this out on the fold, I clipped the fold to help me. And then with the shirt, I'm going to match up. I also clip these on the fold when I'm cutting them out um, just a little bit so that I know where center front and center back are. And I'm just gonna line those clips up together. And your quarter point should be on the front side. It won't be your um, shoulder seam. Very rarely is, is it your shoulder seam. Okay, then with right sides together, I'm just going to pin my neck band with the seam at center back. And I'm just gonna pin my four quarters. Okay, and your band should be, um, you know, quite a bit. Look at the difference there the, between the band and the neck and the neckline. That's fine. We're going to pull the neckline as we go. So whether you're doing this on a sewing machine or on a serger, I'm going to use a quarter inch seam allowance on this because that's what this pattern uses. Um, I'm going to start at center back, if I can find it, and I sew with the shirt on the bottom against the feed dogs and the neck band on top so that I can stretch the neck band to fit the shirt below it. And I just go nice and slow. Um, because this jersey, especially this, really wants to curl, so I want to make sure everything's lying as flat as possible. Sewing at a quarter inch, and I'm just going to pull the neckband, um, stretch it to fit the shirt beneath it. And I think I've said before, but I like to, when I've sewn in a circle or surged in a circle, I just like to tuck my ends. I sew over previous stitches to kind of lock it in place, but I like to tuck my tails back in to the stitching. Just helps keep everything nice and secure. Okay. So then I will go to the machine and I will press the seam down and then when I eventually switch to cover stitch I will cover stitch the um, the neckband down. But yeah it's just a nice wide neckband. Okay so shoulder seams, neckband, I talked about this yesterday a little bit. Then I'm gonna do my sleeves and my sleeves we are not hemming because we are going to add the cuffs to them. So I'm just going to put my sleeves in we're doing things a little bit out of order here today because we're going to do this um, kind of binding strip technique for the hem. Make sure I'm doing this right sides together. So I just match my center, the top of my um, sleeve cap to my
All right. Once we've got our sleeves sewn in, and these are kind of an odd length because again, I'm gonna have these on eventually. Um, normally we would then sew up the side seam. So we would go from the hem all the way, the hem of the shirt all the way to the hem of the sleeve um, in one fell swoop. But I'm only gonna do that on one side today because we're gonna do this um, hem treatment. So I'm just, pick a side, doesn't really matter which, and sew from the bottom of the shirt all the way through to the hem of the sleeve or the bottom of the sleeve. It's not really the hem because I'm adding cuffs. Okay, now you can go and press this seam to the back of the shirt, the one side seam um, that you've done. So I'm gonna go do that really quick and then I'll be right back. Okay, now you should have one long spance that is the hem of your shirt. So what we're going to do is take our one inch strip and it's probably super curly like mine, which is very annoying, but we're gonna go slow and we're just going to line it right sides together and we're just gonna go slow and when you get to, um, you know, anywhere with a curve, just kind of gently feed it in, but I'm gonna sew with the, um, the one inch strip on the top and the shirt against the bottom. Again, you can do this on the sewing machine just as easily as you can do it on the serger um, and I'm going, I'm doing a quarter of an inch here. And you can have a little excess hang over the side. We can trim that down later if you'd like, unless it wants to curl on you, a little stinker. Okay, and I also wanted to say, I mean, you could, you could if you wanted to um, interface this piece, um, this strip that we put on, especially if you're using a twin needle to do your hemming, that might help with the tunneling. I would use a knit interfacing though, because you really want this to stretch, because that's kind of the whole point. You know, it's like using um, a bias strip. You just kind of want it to be able to mold and stretch. Um, Anyway, that is a thought if you're having issues with tunneling. I have not interfaced anything on this one. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to the sewing machine and I've gotta thread it. <laughs> and I'm gonna understitch just like I would. So I'm gonna push my hem that we just did towards this band and I'm gonna sew really close to that seam line because understitching is magical. Um, and then when that's all done, this eventually, once we've sewn the other side seam, this will get folded up and either um, twin stitched in place or cover stitched in place and you won't even, you know, it'll just be a nice little hem facing there. So I'm gonna really quickly understitch this then I'll come back and show you how we're gonna finish off the side seam. Okay, so I also wanna make a note. Now this has a nice um, full hem so I don't have to worry about it stretching but if I've used a, a three millimeter stitch length on this to understitch it, um, but if this does have to stretch over your hips, you wanna be mindful of that, that a straight stitch might pop. Um, so you may need to use just a little zigzag stitch to understitch that. Again, this one has pretty full at, full at the hip, so I'm not too worried about that. But look how nicely that fell. I, mean, I haven't even pressed it yet, but that will fold up really nicely and then that will get um, cover stitched or um, twin needled or whatever you want in place. I'll be cover stitching it, but you could do either. And actually, consequently, if you do have enough room, you could just use a straight stitch on the hem of this if you've got enough room and it doesn't need to stretch, so. Now we're gonna do our second side seam. So we want our shirt right sides together, of course. And we want our hem band um, down, so it's kind of an extension of the side seam. So make sure that that all lines up nice and neat, and we're gonna sew again from the bottom of the shirt to the hem of the sleeve. Okay, and then you will press that to the back as well. All right, for my cuffs, I'm going to put these, there's not really a good right side and a wrong side on these, so just pick one. And I'm going to sew them right sides together at their short ends. Now I'm actually gonna do this on the machine um, at a quarter of an inch first, because I just wanna make sure I can get my stripes lined up as well as possible. 
I don't have to use a stretch stitch on this because my this cuff's not going to be stretching vertically. It's going to be stretching horizontally and that will affect that seam not at all. Now the seam around where this attaches to the shirt has to stretch but not this vertical seam. So I'm going to stitch it with a three millimeter stitch length quarter of an inch on the machine first and then I'll run it through the serger. Um, I just want that to be nice and secure especially because we're not finishing off the end of this um, and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do about that. So let me really quickly sew these up. Alright, so these have been sewn and surged and you'll see at the um, bottom of the cuff I still have these long tails. I'm just going to, this is the other good point of sewing these first is that they're nice and secure and backstitched at that point um, because these, this is just the raw cuff. So I'm just going to tuck this serge tail back through and kind of pull it taut um, and that's going to clean up that edge there. And then what I like to do is I like to go over to the machine and just push the seam allowance to one side and just sew a little line of stitching. Um, and usually it's the, I mean, the color actually matches what I'm using or close to it. Um, and that just keeps the um, seam allowance to one side here at the bottom and helps it keep kind of tucked out of the way. So I'm gonna go do that real quick. Okay, so I'm going to show you up close if you can kind of see. There we go. I've just stitched that seam allowance to the side. So now we have two cuffs. And these are going to have to stretch to fit the sleeve, which is what you want. So I'm going to turn the shirt right side out. and then put my cuff, um, it's wrong side out right now, so I'm gonna put right sides together and I'm gonna match up my seam. And then it's just a matter of stretching the cuff as I sew these two together. So I'm going to do that um, on both sides real quick on the serger at a quarter of an inch. And I will tuck my tails in because I'm sewing in a circle and I like to tuck my tails in when I've come full circle, full round. So I'm gonna do that real quick. And there you have it. So I just need to do the other side and then the only thing that needs to be done on this shirt is the um, neckband does need to be cover stitched down um, and pressed actually. <laughs> and then the hem needs to be cover stitched as well. You guys know I'm not going to do that until later in the week. So I'm just going to finish this other sleeve or this other cuff and then I'll try it on for you guys. I think I will give it a good press but then um, try it on for you guys, okay? Okay, so here we go. Here's my finished shirt. I think it is so cute. I love my three quarter length sleeve with the fun little cuffing. Um, the Obviously the hem's not been done, so it's like falling down right now. Um, but yeah, I love the ballet neckline. I think that's really pretty. I think that's gonna, it's pulling up again just like the other one. So I think once I have cover stitched that down, that that will be nice and sitting really beautifully. Um, yeah, so this shirt's definitely more loose throughout the waist and the hip area. Um, sorry, it's also shorter. <laughs> but I think... I think it's going to get a ton of really cute wear. So, especially this summer. And I'm loving the cuffs. I think that's a lot of fun. So there we go. There's Pamela's t-shirt number one. And again, we will, oh geez, hold on. <laughs> we'll figure this out. We will. Um, 
I think I'm gonna wait and do the cover stitching um, at the end of the week and we will just kind of do everything. And then you guys, I mean, I'm gonna do like a whole lookbook on next Sunday. So um, that's something to look forward to. You get to see everything hemmed and cover stitched and really finished off. Um, I don't know if I'll show you guys the cover stitch. I don't know, I may just sit down and really quickly cover stitch. I have a cover stitch video that's up on the channel on how to do that, so. Um, Ooh, also, I, if you have issues with full bust and are wanting to do um, an FBA in your knit top but don't necessarily want to dart, I have three ways of doing a dartless FBA also on my channel. It's under the playlists on my, ch if you go to my, um, the home channel, um, there's a playlist thing that you can click on and it's under tutorials, um, both at the cover stitch and the um, three ways to do a dartless FBA, <laughs> like in a knit top. So anyway. I was able to get a, another tank top out of this fabric as well. I did not have enough for a pair of underwear though. This one was cutting it close. So now I'm wondering if in the orange sherbet color, if that I had maybe two yards of that. And then I think I had a meter and a half of this. So I was able to get with creative cutting <laughs> this top um, with the three quarter um, sleeves. And then they aren't full three quarter sleeves because of course I added the cuff on there. Um, that's just really cute. <laughs> um, but yeah, I had to get kind of creative with the meter and a half. And I think my next two knits are both the Stoff knits that I bought in Evansville. And I think I have a yard and a half of those. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to get a tank top out of those at all. Um, maybe just underwear, <laughs> which is fine. Because <laughs> um, I do want to do full three-quarter length sleeves on those. Um, it's one of my favorite sleeve lengths. So... Anyway, this is my t-shirt for today. I'm gonna cut this though today because when I was editing yesterday's footage, I'm already at 30 minutes and so I just don't want this to be like an hour long and it might be since I did the full sew along on this. So I'm gonna call it for today. Thank you guys for joining me. I hope you're enjoying t-shirt week and yeah, it'll just be a t-shirt today. Um, so tomorrow I'm gonna tackle another um, Pamela Patterns t-shirt and I don't know if it'll be the um, boat neck one or the square neck. I'm undecided on that. Um, and then we'll be doing a V-neck. I'm gonna do the uh, Love Notions Classic Tee with the V-neck, um, so I'll be showing you that a little bit later in the week. Okay, so that's all I've got for today. I hope you guys, and then of course the Henley. I hope you guys have a wonderful, um, or have had a wonderful weekend, and I will see you all tomorrow. And let's see, tomorrow you're gonna be watching the video on fabric and fit. So um, I need to film that. <laughs> Okay, um, do that tomorrow. I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye.